The North Dakota State Senate this week considered uh, Senate Bill 2308. It would allow schools to post the Ten Commandments. Uh, several senators quickly pointed out that uh, that had already been struck down by the Supreme Court. However, uh, it was then argued that uh, this would just permit them, give them permission to uh, post the Ten Commandments. Um, here's uh, part of the debate. The bill was sponsored by uh, Senator Jane Myrdal, a Republican from Edinburgh. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, <clears throat> as this body can see, I'm the main sponsor on this bill. Um, I don't know, Mr. President, if you've been to the Supreme Court, but when you walk up to the Supreme Court, there's two big doors, and on the doors are the Ten Commandments. When you walk into the Supreme Court where our justices sit, right over their heads, there's a man with a tablet of the Ten Commandments. And as you look in a rotunda, just like here, it's a little bit more magnificent than we have it here, Mr. President, but you see, again, the Ten Commandments all around. You will also see that in just about every building you walk into in Washington, D.C. So if you haven't had a chance to go to the Supreme Court, I encourage you to do so. So, Mr. President, we sit here as lawmakers, and that's what we do. And sometimes um, it's challenging to make laws because a court might have decided in the past that that wasn't the way it was supposed to be. The former speaker mentioned separation between church and state. And, Mr. President, that's not in any of our founding documents. As a matter of fact, it was just handwritten in a letter from Jefferson to a pastor that was concerned that the government would establish a religion. We sit in our committee in, in judiciary, and as the, eloquently as the senator from Fargo spoke of last week, too, on a bill that was withdrawn, we deal with some of the sickest behaviors, some of the most criminal things, in those two committees particularly, and we bring them to you here on the floor. And Mr. President, we keep wanting to add bills and add restrictions, and we certainly pour hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in a gross. We kind of joke here that we educate, medicate, and incarcerate. That's what we pay money for. Um, and we do. But we are not willing to stop sailing down that stream of history, if you will, stop and go back up the river and try to ask ourselves, why? Why are all these things happening? Why... And I did some research. Why, as a matter of fact, is there um, so much growth in crime and teen pregnancies occurred actually 15 years? I'm looking for the statistics I found here. But basically, 15 years after we took prayer, and by the way, we do pray here, and the Ten Commandments out of the public school, pregnancy rates of girls from 10 to 14 rose over 400%. Pregnancy rates of teens out of wedlock for those 15 and up rose 148%. Divorces rose 300%. And the list that can go on and on and on. So if we're, I'm here today bringing this forward because I'm sick and tired of us putting band-aids on all the things that we see in society that is so scary. And especially now today, um, with what we see in the nation as far as the Pledge of Allegiance, I think there's no better time to encourage, with this permissive language, that schools could do that, that we can unify under one nation. I took an oath to this nation, and I do the pledge every day. I don't see that as offensive. And people say they can do it now. The former speakers say they can do it now. Yes, they did. But right here in the city where we are, there was a middle school of 25 students in a class that did that every day. And just last year, one student, or likely the student's parents, were offended. And that school no longer does the Pledge of Allegiance. That student can opt out any time. This is a local control issue, Mr. President. And the other thing as far as the establishment clause, we're not establishing anything in this bill. This is a permissive bill. It doesn't establish anything. And I think as lawmakers, it is our right to even challenge the Supreme Court back in the 80s or even earlier in the 40s and back in as far as we can go. And if I may quote one of our former Founding Fathers, Mr. President, Thomas Jefferson, he was so worried about the church courts would overstep their authority and instead of interpreting the law, began, began making law and writing law. And I would assert that by taking away religion, and by the way, no religion is offended by the Ten Commandments, none. But by taking that away, he was literally afraid that we would become an oligarchy 
the rule of a few over many. So I would encourage North Dakota to take leadership on this. I would encourage us all not to be offended, because what offends you more? Thou shalt not kill or murder. What offends you more? Thou shalt not steal or theft. And I can go down and down that list, including some of the things that we see in society being done against our children. So I encourage a strong yes vote. Senator Shibley. Uh, Mr. President, I got a question for the carrier. Is that your question? Uh, the question I have is uh, uh, Section 2, which uh, provides immunity for the uh, uh, liability, for the um, sent from liability. My question is, is can we actually write uh, um, a statement like this for a state uh, against federal law? I mean, what, what authority would that have? Because my understanding is, is that uh, I, I'm presuming that uh, this has been challenged in, in Supreme Court, found unconstitutional. Would this actually protect their school is? And the rationale for my question is, is because uh, school board or community you know, uh, suggest that they put up the Ten Commandments, and I'm certainly not against that. I think that would be a great idea. I am worried about the liability concern of our school districts or, or some of the uh, powers of the schools if, if this would actually pr provide the protection it is. So maybe, if not the carrier, somebody could answer that question. Does this actually give the immunity that we're looking for? Senator Diane Larson. Mr. President, um, in answer to the Senator from District 31, um, I have looked at a lot of Supreme Court cases on this, and in this Establishment Clause, the reason that it was found illegal is because they were required to display the Ten Commandments. In all of these court cases that I have, I've been looking through a lot of them over the past couple days, and it, when the government is requiring that that's when they're establishing the religion. We are not requiring it. A school board doesn't have to require it. And um, so, I mean, the, the school board could say, you know, if a classroom votes to have it displayed in their classroom, they can. This is only permissive. We are not establishing the religion in that school. Also, I did check... Um, I appreciate the question because I did check with legislative council and I said, are we allowed to, to do something like this? And I was told that every statute that the legislature passes is presumed constitutional unless it's overruled by the courts. So yes, it is presumed to be constitutional for us to pass this as it is. Thank you. Senator Mathern. Thank you, Mr. President. I have a question for the chairman of the Education Committee, if he would address my question. And the question is, how would a school board, to your estimation, decide on which version of the Ten Commandments would be used? I've been a religious education teacher and I've seen many versions of the Ten Commandments, so that is one question. And also, I've been a uh, father and a grandpa for children. And um, I'm just wondering, in light of my experience and the questions children have, who would be addressing the questions for different children of different ages in our schools, those are some pretty complicated sins that are noted in the um, in the Ten Commandments. And from my experience, they require a pretty um, specific explanation for children at different ages. So I'm wondering, from your experience as the education chair, how would those probably be addressed if this bill was passed? Senator Shibley. Um, Mr. Pres Mr. President, even though I do not speak lawyer, 
my interpretation of this is that regardless of what version they would have, and, and um, it would be ultimately the school board that would decide unless they would delegate that authority to administration. So, But eventually, even if they delegate that authority, school board would be responsible for it. So they would be the ones that were are elected to make those decisions. They would be the ones that would have to determine which version or which language would be used. Senator Clements. Mr. President, we've been listening to some discussion today on authority. What authority do we have? Where does it come from? Do we abide by it? Do we use the liberties that we have? I'd just like to read the preamble to the North Dakota Constitution. We, the people of North Dakota, grateful to Almighty God, for the blessings of civil and religious liberty to ordain and establish this Constitution. Senator Holmberg. Uh, Mr. President, the, um, it's an interesting bill. And uh, I think that if we were doing floor amendments on it, I would certainly recommend that after the words authorize school districts to do this and post in a classroom, if you dare, because I believe uh, a senator from District 43 hit the nail on the head. What attorney at a school district is going to say, yeah, go ahead, because you will be sued no matter what it says here about immunity. You will be in federal court. You will lose. And Mr. President, I taught at South Junior High when we had the Ten Commandments on the wall. During the time I was there, in 1980, the Ten Commandments were removed. And I'll tell you this, those eighth graders were just as squirrely after the Ten Commandments were removed than they were before. Senator Hogue. Uh, Mr. Mr. President, I was going to try to answer a couple questions that the uh, chairman of Senate Education presented, and, and it actually relates to what the senator um, from Grand Forks referred to in terms of Section 2, the immunity. Um, the, the state, we as the, as the state of North Dakota, can immunize uh, our school districts from state law claims. Um, so, and we, and we, we have done that. Uh, but in terms of claims that arise from a violation of the U.S. Constitution, we we cannot do that. Uh, that uh, relates to the to the what's called the su supremacy clause, Mr. President, which says when there's a obviously when there is a, a conflict between a state statute and the federal constitution, the federal constitution always prevails. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out, Mr. President, is that the, this area of the law is not as clear as one would hope. Um, uh, the senator from Grand Forks mentioned the 1980 Supreme Court decision, but actually the last time the court uh, addressed this issue of placing Ten Commandments on public property, they decided two separate cases and decided them differently. They decided in the case of uh, a Kentucky, uh, a, a Kent two Kentucky courthouses put the, the Ten Commandments uh, within the courthouse. And the court struck that down and said, well, that's, there's no secular purpose for that. That's, that violates the Establishment Clause. And on that same day, they upheld the placement of the Ten Commandments as a statue on the Capitol grounds of the state of Texas. And they reasoned that the... the um, the, the, the statue of the Ten Commandments had been there for 40 years. It was among 19 or other uh, statues which had different historical significance, and they upheld it. And so we're, we're left with this idea. What the court said is, 
it's not up or down, black and white, Ten Commandments come out or stay in. You have to analyze the specific Ten Commandment uh, statue or plaque or placard in the context of, of does it have a, sec a valid secular purpose. And so that's how murky this question is. And so uh, uh, I'm, I'm afraid uh, we may not know whether the, the placement of these Ten Commandments in these classrooms is constitutional until we, <laughs> until we see what it looks like. So there you have it, Mr. President. That's the sense of humor of the U.S. Supreme Court. Senator Myrdal. Well, Mr. President, I just wanted to clarify a couple of things. I think the senator from from Fargo was questioning how how to answer children if they ask about it. Um, I think we need to remember that the Ten Commandments is a historical document, and one of the few historical documents that we've completely removed out of the history books. And I also want to remind you, Mr. President, that um, it isn't. It was never established as a Christian faith. The word Christian hasn't hadn't even come along for two thousand years. It was established way before that. So it is a historical document, and I think I certainly would hope that our teachers would be able to teach that as much as they teach Darwinism or other things that we teach in schools today. And the second thing, yes, we should dare. We should dare. And yes, it is murky water, waters, but so, are, so is the state of our, our society even murkier. And I would uh, dare to challenge that to litigate this would be a lot less cost than what we're going to keep gaining cost in our funding the ills of society from this body. Senator Anderson. Mr. President, uh, just to throw my two cents in the pot here, uh, I'm in favor of uh, a teacher being able to teach whatever they want to about whatever religion because I think it's helpful that uh, students understand the broad pace of the world, not just the immediate world that they live in. And I have no objection to posting the Ten Commandments or posting the commandments of any other religion. However, I'm suspicious that some of us would oppose that if it happened in our schools. And just a little statement that somebody said, not me, but it goes like this. The divine right of majorities is the illegitimate offspring of the divine right of kings. The Senate Bill 2308 went on to pass the Senate with uh, 34 yes votes and 13 no votes. It now goes on to the House for their consideration. I'm Neil Carlson reporting for inews.tv.